Welcome to this demo video. Today we're going to be looking at how to use Python to do some geocoding uh, and leveraging uh, a couple different APIs to do that. So geocoding is a pretty straightforward process of taking a uh, textual description of someplace, so like a street address or a zip code or you know even like a building name landmark, and uh, asking for its latitude and longitude coordinates. And so um, the the concept's really simple, but of course this is a really difficult process because you know you need some uh, a smart kind of uh, processes to take those keywords and try to find those coordinates um, that can be returned to you. And so you, you'd want to do this if you were going to plot something on a map. You know if you had a, a number of addresses you wanted to put uh, plot on a map, you would need those latitude and longitude to uh, align your data to the coordinate grid that the map works on. So it's a really kind of core feature of anything that has to do with maps and mapping. Um, there's also kind of the reverse idea of this called reverse geocoding, where you have a, uh, an, a set of coordinates, so latitude and longitude, and then you ask, what's at this location? You know, what would be the address if I had these latitude and longitude and stuff like that? So as I said, this is a difficult um, thing in practice, so uh, it's not something you can really kind of do on your own, right? You need a really big data set. You need really advanced kind of computing and stuff like that. So you have to use an API where basically we're going to send it um, some some um, a string that represents a, a physical place in the world, and the system is going to send us back the latitude and longitude for that um, location. So uh, there's a number of APIs you use. You know, there's a ton. I'm, I'm going to look at two that have. Um, you do have to sign up for an account. There's really no um, geocoding services that are just kind of straight free, unlimited use. Um, you do have to sign up for an account for both of these, but they are um, they have a free tier, so you can do a, a, a quite a number of requests uh, for free. Um, you know, I think like the Mapbox one has like a hundred thousand requests limit per month. So, you know, for like a project like um, if you're doing like kind of like a small scale project, you can quite easily. Um, use these uh, fit, fit underneath the free tier of these services without having to pay any money. So we're going to do that. We're going to get started with the the Google uh, geocoding API. And so um, I don't have anything really prepared. We're just going to kind of go through the process like we were doing it in real time and figure out how to use this. Um, so first, um, we need to set up a, um, a Google um, project. So we need to go to the Google API console. And so, you know, this is, you know, depending on how, you know, how, you know, when you view this video based on this interface, it could, you know, look differently. But basically the idea is, you know, if you go to council.cloud.google or just Google, you know, search um, Google API Council, you'll get to something like this. Um, and they ha usually have, um, uh, or it, the way that this is set up is that they have like projects. And so um, we're going to make a new project and see if we can do this. We'll we'll make a, a temporary project. We'll call it temp test. Um, I have a large number of projects. Um, so no organization will create this, and we'll see how far we get. All right, so we created the project. And so now within this project, we can um, add enable APIs and services. So if we search, click this button and we search for geocode, we should be able to um, see this geocode API. And so this geocode API is the API that we would use to um, get coordinates you know, from text strings. So we're going to enable this for our project. And you know this is how all these Google APIs work. You enable um, different sets of APIs for your project, and then you're able to use the, those APIs within that project. Um, so I'm not on that one. So I, so I I hadn't I created it, but it didn't automatically switch me. So I enabled the API for a different um, project. So I, I switched to the the project we just created, and I enabled it the same. Um, Google uh, Geocode API. All right, so it's enabled now. So what we need to do is now create some credentials. And so we need like an API key for this uh, API to work. Um, 
So API keys are here. Um, you, if you have different workflows, you know, of course there's like APIs that interact with count and stuff like that. Um, you might be setting up an API key that works um, for a product you're making, but you know, other people are gonna log in with their Google account, all the sorts of workflows, right? Um, lots of different um, avenues and different types of APIs. But for this API, it's pretty straightforward. You just need a key. Um, so I'm going to create a, a key, an API key. All right, so this is the API key. Of course, I will, you know, delete this after this video is over, so it's not a big deal to show it here. I'm going to copy it, and um, I'm going to go uh, make a project directory for our, for our project that we're going to work on today. Um, so I'm just going to go to my downloads and uh, make a new directory called uh, geotest. And I'm just going to make um, Google. Uh, py. So I'm just going to paste this in here. You know, this is um, a really bad idea to hard code keys into your um, script. Um, but if it's not going anywhere, it's it's fine for now. So I'm just going to hard code this in our script for now. You know, if you were going to like um, commit this to a re repository and upload it to GitHub or something, you definitely would not want to hard code any sort of key in there. So uh, maybe we'll we'll figure that out in a second. Um, but I want to kind of figure out how to use this. So I have this API enabled, and I'm ready to go with a key. Now I just need to um, basically find out how to use the API. So I'm just going to see if there's like a, a Python um, module that might help us with this. Um, And let's see. So it says, you know, this is a Python library that map, they wrap functionality for the following APIs. Wrap means basically it just creates a convenient way of executing these API requests in Python. So you could always do um, this sort of um, request via requ uh, requests or any other sort of um, internet communicating way you can do in Python, um, but you can also use these built in services um, and this is really good for like really complicated apis you know if you're doing a lot of like in-depth work like there's a lot of steps or something it's easier to use this um, kind of these wrappers so they say they have one for google but let's, let's take a look at the geocoding api to see how easy it is to use um, so this is a geocoding request and response latitude longitude lookup so it says they're sending uh, an address here to the uh, API. And so this is just the entire API call, and you add your key there. So this is actually like really straightforward. Um, I don't think we actually would need a, a, a library or a module to, to get this to work for us because we just need to make one get request with this API key and then the value we want to pass to it. So let's not um, complicate things by trying to um, install module and get that working and all that. Let's just do our traditional kind of sh um, using requests to make a, a an internet request. So um, I'm going to import requests. And of course, um, if you have if you didn't have this installed yet, um, so most of, a lot of our other videos, we, we use this, you'd have to pip3 install the request module. I, of course, I already have it installed. So, um, you know, it's already satisfied requirements. Um, but if you hadn't ever used it before, you'd have to install that. And so the let's just do a test with it really quickly. So this is the URL we know that we're going to do, the the base URL. And so this is um, anything after the question mark are parameters that we're sending to the um, URL, the API. So we need to put this as a string. And then we can make our payload as a, a Python dictionary where we have um, key value pairs. And so the address would be one key, and then the value would be this. And then, um, or this. And then the ampersand means there's another key value pair here, and the value would be your API key. Right, so this is this has been escaped for um, sending via Z, via URL. So we can just remove these plus signs, and then of course the API key. I'm just going to hard code it now. Um, well, actually, let's not hard code it. This is probably a good example of 
mission reinforce that idea. So in this case, I'm just going to keep this file in an, an external place or this key in, a, in an external um, file. So I'm going to make a new file here called um, Google key.json. And so in here, I'm just going to paste this key as a string, as a string, save this. And then what I can do is um, use JSON, import the JSON, and we'll set the key to um, say JSON load, and we'll load the um, the file we just created called Google dot to Google underscore key JSON, and that will load the key in, and we can just print out, see if it works. Let's try to run this and see if it works. Um, Google. .py. All right, so we have a little problem here. Let's comment this out as a syntax problem for now. But let's run this again. Um, let's see, string object has an attribute read. Oh, right. So you have to, <laughs> for when you use JSON.load, you don't you don't just tell it the file name. You have to tell it to open a file name, right? So I uh, I was kind of used to a different library there. But so we need to say open and then the file name. This is the same way of doing something like this. You could say with open as whatever, right? And then you you put whatever in here. This is just kind of like a shorthand way of doing that. You could just um, put open and then the file name in here, which is, again, Google underscore key. All right, so we're going to open that and let's see if this works. Yeah, so then it prints out our key there. So we know that this, um, we now have our key. And so what you do with this situation is that you can now uh, say, if you're gonna use this in Git and Git, GitHub, you could add a, a, um, a Git ignore file, right? And so in the Git ignore file, you'd say, okay, I want you definitely to ignore this Google key JSON file and put that in there. So, it, you know, if you committed this to your repository and pushed it up, it just would not include that file in the in the repo. And so your key is safe because it's only locally and it wouldn't go anywhere, but it still works seamlessly because it just loads the key from that external file. There's other ways of doing this with like uh, environmental variables and stuff like that, but this one is also a good way of doing it. Um, all right, so let's undo this and continue on. So now we have our key being loaded into our program. We can then um, do a um, make our payload here. And so when I ran this earlier, we got an error message that we skipped over. Um, but let's look at that again. Um, it just said uh, invalid syntax line 10. And so this is simply because uh, in a dictionary, you have to end each uh, key value pair with a comma. And I did not do that. So then we have it. And so, of course, we don't want to have this string there. We want to actually have our key, so we'll pass it there. And then the next thing we need to do is get the response, um, which we'll simply use the request module to get the URL, the base URL. And we're going to say, hey, um, uh, pass these uh, parameters that we've created. And then we're going to, um, you know, we could print out the response status code to debug if we needed to, and then we can also print out the the text. Hopefully, um, it should be JSON, so we could just convert that to data automatically. So we'll say JSON loads with an S, the response dot text, and let's print out the data. All right, so we're making the request, we're passing the parameters, we're just printing out the status code in case we get something weird, we can debug it, and then we're loading the JSON and we're printing it uh, as as uh, Python data, not just the text coming back from the server as JSON. Um, all right, so it says this API project is not authorized to use this API. Request denied. All right, so um, I'm going to go back to our uh, Google console here. And I'm going to see why this is an API. I have a 
This key is unrestricted. Okay. Let's find that's unrestricted. Maybe I don't have this configured, so it's not enabled yet. I'm not sure what this consent screen. This is usually for like um, this is um, usually for like um, like OAuth things. Um, um so i'm not sure if you need to do this um but it, we'll do it anyway so this is really just for if you're going to do some sort of user login and how it looks and all that all right So I don't know if that was its issue. Let's see. Let's run it again and see what we get. So API project is not authorized, uses API. All right. So let's see what we're going on here. Let's see if we enabled this service correctly. So strange. So I did enable earlier. I swear I clicked on this and it said enabled. So I wonder what happened that to that. So, oh, I include, I enable the geocoding and the geolocation. Huh. So I'm not sure which one we we're using there. So they're both enabled. I mean, we're definitely using a geocoding API, so I'm not sure why we're getting error. So let's, let's see if that did anything. Let's try to run it again. Okay, so you must enable billing on this project. Okay, so... This basically makes you put in some sort of payment thing, even if you're using like a free tier. Let's see what the free tier is for Google um, Geocode um, pricing. Hmm, let's see if there's a free amount of free. Okay, for each billing account, you qualify Google Maps platform SKUs, a 200 Google Maps platform credit is available each month, automatically applied. So this means that, you know, they give you $200 worth of API requests every month. So uh, it's five cents per request. So to use up, uh, so $5 per thousand um, requests. So if you have $200, you know, of course, divided by five, You'd have 40,000 requests you could do per month with their free amount of uh, credit they give you every month. So that's fine. So the problem with us, though, is that we didn't enable our billing account. So you have to like kind of go in and, and enable billing on our uh, API. So you have to figure out how to do that somehow here. Okay, so I went to the overview and it says no billing account is associated with this project. Go to billing. So we'll see what this says. I'm going to link to a billing account. Um, so I'm not sure if this is going to show any information about my credit card when I click this button. So I'm just going to pause and we'll come back when I know for sure. All right, so I'm going to select a billing my billing account and set account. Um, okay, so it, you probably wouldn't run into this problem. Um, so uh, apparently, if you, you can only have a certain number of billing accounts associated with an, a project, 
So I've reached that limit. So you wouldn't get this message if you're just starting up with Google APIs. You would you wouldn't have a lot of projects that already have some billing accounts set set up to them. So you wouldn't have this problem. But I'm just gonna quickly fix this and. I'll probably just delete some old project that I wasn't using, and then so I'll have a um, I won't have that limit. So I'll pause and be right back. All right, so I removed a few projects, and I was successfully able to enable billing on this project, um, the 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 project we created. So let's see if our API gets a different response now that we've jumped through all the different hoops that it wants us to do. Okay, so we did get some data back. Um, uh, this is the response uh, from asking it to geocode um, some Google address that was um, coded. So let's let's give an example. Let's find um, Pratt Institute's um, Manhattan um, address and see if we can geocode it to uh, get the URL. Um, so this is here it is so if we pass it in our script we pass it this address instead let's see um and you can see how this is like you know pretty complicated right because you know how many different ways are addresses represented textually all you know it's a huge it's a really complicated problem um all right so we're going to get the data back and then let's print the data out um as a little bit more human readable so we use the JSON dumps to turn it back into the string, and then we'll just ask it to indent it for us by two. So if we ran this now, we should see what the what it returns. Um, okay, so it sent back uh, a bunch of uh, you know results because you could imagine right like potentially an address could have multiple meanings or multiple locations or something like that it could interpret it interpret it different ways but basically it sends back a list of results so a number of results this one had um only one result it looks like mhm mm and it gave us a dictionary for each one of those results and there's address components so that breaks down like the things like the street number um, the road route, you know, sub localities, you know, cities, administrative areas, blah blah blah, right? So it really kind of parses out the um, the different pieces of the address for you, and then it also gives you the geometry here. So um, if we wanted to print this out, we could we'd want to look for um, the first result right um so we first we want to make sure that there was some results right so we'd say like uh if the um so first we want to check to make sure our our our, our, our kind of request worked so we, we'd be expecting this to be a dictionary and that the key result is in that dictionary so we'll say uh if uh, results is in the data that came back then do this otherwise we'll print out something like error no result no uh, results in data or something like that just so you know if you run it and something happens you at least get a, a visual cue that something's going wrong all right so if that is true then the results are there then we want to test to make sure that the um, the length of the results um, is bigger than zero, right? So if it's bigger than zero, then that means that there's at least one there. And uh, that means that we can do something with it. Otherwise, we're going to say another error and say, like, um, you know, no results, no, no res results. We'll say no results key in data, and then this will say no results. So if that's true, then we can get the first response. So we'll say um, result is equal data results and then zero, right? And then we can um, look at the key that holds our geometry in it, which is called geometry, and then location, lat, and long. So dictionary, dictionary. So we can say, um, we'll say lat equals um, first results. 
and that's going to be geometry and then location and then flat and then we'll say long will be the same but just a different key so then we can print out this um as like this right flat and long all right so let's see if we run this if we did that correctly so um i did not do that correctly uh so i, I was using a template string here but i forgot to include the variables wrap them in um uh, curly brackets so if I wrap these in curly brackets, then it will print the variable, not the literal lat long text. And let's run this again. Um, all right, so there it is. So if we put this these addresses in these coordinates in something like a system like Google Maps, we would see and search for that. We would we should see. Um, the location for Pratt. So this should be the, the the Latin long for Pratt in Manhattan. Yep, and it looks like it's it's working. So it's very slow. Um, you know, if we zoomed in, we'd see that it is indeed Pratt Manhattan. All right. So that works. You know, so of course you probably wouldn't be doing this hard coded one off. You'd want to. Um, you know, you might have a big list of things, right? that you'd want to geocode and so you might have like a csv file or a json file and you'd have to have a for loop in there and then you loop through each address and and kick off the result or kick off this and then you'd store this each one of these into your your json file so we don't um we don't have that so we could mock something up like that just to show how you would do it um so let's say that we had um a a json file called um uh, data.json and we'll say this is a list and there's each one has a dictionary in it and each one of those has a an address and um, inside that address is of course uh, an address so let's put Pratt's in there uh, let's um, let's make another entry and put a uh, Rat's other address in there. Um, right, and you could go on and on and on and add more. But you know, this is something kind of like what your data might look like. It might have something like this set up, or it might be a CSV file. But basically, you have a data set that has a, a repeated number of entries in it that you want to do something with it. So let's save this and um, we'll load the data here up here. So we'll say um, um, source data and we'll load it with the JSON load and we'll open the data.json, right? And so then we have, um, um, we're gonna have to add, make a for loop here. So we'll say for um, uh, item in source data so that will be each one of these dictionaries and then we're going to indent everything underneath of it comment this out and so now we're going to for each item we're going to do one of these requests right and so we, we would need to modify the payload each time so in this case we're, we're storing our data is coming in from this json dictionary and so it's in this uh, field called address so we'll say item Key stays the same each time, but the address is going to change. I'll do this results, print out the status code, load the data in, figure out if there is data. And then what we can do here is uh, if there is results, right, instead of just um, printing them to the screen, we could actually modify the, the, dic the, the this dictionary that we're currently in in the for loop to add that results. So we could say item lat equals lat and item long equals long. And so we're actually modifying this dictionary that we loaded, this list of dictionaries. And so what we could do at the very end is now that it's modified with, uh, you know, this runs how many entries you have, 
you could dump it back out. You could actually even overwrite it, but you could maybe save it so you you know in case a mistake happens. So you'd say like um, JSON um, dump, and you'll say, okay, I want you to dump the all source source data, which is now modified with our Latin long, and I want to put it in a new file, and we'll call it data with lat long dot JSON. We'll open that for write mode, and we'll just indent it as well. All right, so this should run, do those two entries, and then um, write out the data. Um, all right, so we got an error message here. I did something wrong. Um, this is a JSON decode error on line nine. So this is means, um, Oh, that's line nine of the of the of the file. This actually happened on line five of our code. So line five is this here, and so I probably didn't format this JSON file correct or something like that. Um, oh, I don't think it likes <laughs> trailing commas, so it's that fussy. So, you know, normally you wouldn't be mocking up a JSON file by hand. You'd have it from other pro some other process. So let's see if that was the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it made those two requests and modified the dictionary and then um, wrote the response back out. So we should have another file here called with lat long. Let's look at that one. And so I added this, right? So this is, you know, a pretty simplistic uh, idea here. If you had um, a JSON file with more fields, it would look different, or if you have a CSV file, but this structure is the same that you would do, right? You definitely um, have some sort of for loop looping through the data. You might have used the CSV reader to load a, a CSV file and loop through and modify the CSV or output it somewhere else. But the main idea is opening a data source, looping through it, do, kicking off the request, and then storing that data somewhere so you can use it afterwards, right? So that one was the uh, Google API. So let's look at another API, just in case you know, give some variety here. And so Mapbox is another one that's just a very popular um, uh, option. Let's just take a look at the documentation here and how to do this. And let's see, it says how to geocode. So what I'm looking here is to see how to format the query and then what URL you have to use. Um, so in this is the example, you say, um, here's the URL, you give it, they're sending this 15, 15, 515, 15th Street, Northwest DC here. And it says dot JSON. And then it says type address and access token, your map box access token. So um, this looks pretty straightforward too. I don't think we need to use the wrapper for this API either. Um, we kind of have a sense, you know, this is obviously configurable. You can change stuff around, but and set the tolerance on relevance and things like that and set what you're looking for. So if you're like weren't looking for an address, there's probably other types you could send it to figure out um, and have better relevant scores. But let's get ourselves a Mapbox access token, and then we can kind of go from there. So I'm going to sign in. Um, you know, if if you don't have an account, you create one, or you use um, one you already have. So I'm going to sign in. Probably don't remember my password, but we'll see what happens. All right, so I signed in and I'm going to um, create a token. The browser looks really weird because um, I don't want my tokens to be displayed. So if I click on this tokens up here, I can create a token. Of course, there's a bunch of tokens beneath this fold here. I just don't want to reveal those. So I'm going to create a new token. And on this page, you just give it a name, whatever. Um, it's called geocode test. Uh, and then you can pick the scopes. So you can probably reduce the scopes for this token if you wanted to, um, but I'm not going to do that. 
and then you can give it a URL. If you were going to use this token on like a client side site, like in JavaScript on a, on a website, and you wanted to restrict it to only requests coming from that site, you could add that here. Um, but uh, I don't, we're using this on the back end, so I don't care about that. And so I'm going to make this um, tiny again. So when I press create token, um, I'm going to ask for my password. Okay. And so create a new token. Um, so I'm going to look at it really quick. All right, so there really, was really no good way to show you that screen without <laughs> revealing all my other tokens. So I, I just clicked on the one I created just then, and this is the screen it looks like, and then it gives you the key here. So I can just copy this. So um, we don't know what the um, the response looks like, but we do have a good sense of how to kick it off using this example. So let's go and... Um, uh, try to code this using this example URL. So I'm going to make another one called Mapbox. Um, I'm going to paste this here. I'm just going to copy some stuff from a previous one that we were using, like the request module and JSON module. So this one has to be a URL, of course. Uh, the URL is a little bit different. So anything after the question mark is a payload parameters type situation. So that's there. But also this this stuff here is um, it's not a part it's not a parameter right it's actually like baked into the URL and so I'm not sure we can't really include that as a parameter we actually have to build the URL for um, this request probably this is why doing the um, the wrapper would make things easier as far as constructing requests um, but that's okay. So we're going to um, copy the payload from our other sites. We're going to do the same thing too with the key. We're going to load the key there, but we're going to change the file name to Mapbox. And I'm going to I'm going to edit this file. I'm going to um, paste the key we just created here. So there's the key. Save that. So now we have the key loaded. Uh, I'm going to copy the payload thing we did. Uh, the payload here, though, are types. And this is the address. This is not the address we're looking for. This is the hard-coded word address. And then we're going to say um, types, which is nothing. So I guess we don't need to include that. And then we need the access token. Instead of key, they call it access token. And then we get, uh, we'll call it a key, or we could rename this to access token if we really wanted to. But all right, so that's the payload part of it. Um, the URL, though, as I was saying, is a little bit different because the address is like built into the to the URL. So I don't know if we would need to escape it, but we could. Um, Use a template string here to um, to um, insert a, our 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 file, and so I just um, I, I have JavaScript on the brain from what I just said earlier. So I, I created this file called Mapbox.js, which is ridiculous. So I'm going to move Mapbox.js to Mapbox.py, right? Python is the extension for our files. Because um, I was looking and I was like, why is this um, why is this not syntax highlighting correctly? It's because I named it the wrong file type. All right, so it's a py file, and as I was saying, we're going to use a template string to modify the um, the URL that we're generating. So just so this looks like the same URL in the example, and so let's go grab our, our address that we had hard coded before here. And so let's just hard code this into our um, a variable. Look for, and we'll slot that variable into here. So I, I you know, I'm not sure. I think the request module might um, URL escape the 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 things inside of the the text. So like turn these to plus signs, etc., um, to make it a, a URL safe. I'm not sure if it will do that. I think it does, um, but we'll see. 
So then we have pretty much the same as we were doing with Google. We're going to kick off the response with the payload and the URL. A URL, the params for the payload, and um, see what it says. And let's let's also print out the um, response. All right, so let's see what happens. Um, wow, look at that. It's, it has a little attribution in the response. All right, so it sent back a response, and um, let's see what it looks like. So it has, this is a dictionary, it has a couple keys, type, feature collection, query. Here's the query, features. And then this is a list of features, and it looks like there is more than one feature returned in our request, a number of them actually. So let's look at the first feature that returned to see if it worked, what we thought it'd be. So place type address, relevance one, um, matching place. So it found, um, it found the address that we're looking for. And then it has more context. So, you know, these, oh, look at this. It actually has Wikidata IDs too associated with it. Interesting. So this Q number is like the Q number on Wikidata. If you went to Wikidata and went to that Q number, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the data for Manhattan, right? So this is actually returning Wikidata Q numbers in the response, which is cool. I, I didn't know that I did that. So, um, that returns some stuff like that. And then the next feature was, um, similar. This looks like the same. Oh, interesting. So we put in West 14th. This is the Manhattan streets. And the second feature came back was for a Brooklyn location. Interesting. In Guanus. So relevance was for this response not a little bit less, right? So we didn't we didn't specify Manhattan in the text, so it just it didn't I guess it also looked for the same address in Brooklyn because we just said New York, right? So this one is obviously correct. So we'd probably always want to take the first response and just assume that's the best because it's returning them sort of by relevancy. So we would assume that that's like the best uh, response there. And so if we do that, we can um, just kind of do the same process we did before where we just take the first one and then we're gonna pull out the center key of the Latin long. In this case, they have it as um, a list of Latin long. So it's a little bit different structure. So we can, um, we have our response here comment this out and so we would want to do the same test as we were doing in Google so we'd want to say um, we'd say okay is there a features key in the response and is it bigger than zero yes and then we could say okay first result is going to be the features instead of results, and that's the first one. And then we want to find the center or geometry point. So we can just use the center. So let's see if that worked, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we would set I'm assuming this is the order they're in. So we'd say lat equals the zero because this is a list. So this is zero. And then long is equal to the next one, which is one. All 
right? So, um, so you know, the same process would apply. You'd have to, if you're going to do this for a number of things, you'd want to indent all this underneath a for loop and load the data in and populate these variables correctly. But the the rest of it's pretty much the same, so we don't need to redo that. So you know, we, in this kind of demo, we went through two ways of doing this, two separate APIs. You definitely will need to use an API to do this sort of work. There's really no easy way of doing it um, locally or without any sort of API access. Um, but you know, I think these two, while they are, they do require a little bit of setup. You do need to put in, you know, for Google, for example, you, you have to have a credit card, so that might be a problem. But um, for the Mapbox one, I'm not sure if you need to add a, an account. But for both of these, you know, we're not. It's it's pretty much free if we stay underneath a certain limit. So if we stay underneath for Mapbox, it's like 100,000, and for Google, we said it was something like 40,000. So you know, if you as long as you stay underneath those limits per month, you wouldn't be charged for their usage. And after that, you know, it's like I think Google said something. It's like five cents for a thousand calls, which you know it seems cheap. But if you do if you're doing a huge data set, that could quickly add up. And each one of those calls, you know, is a, is a request every every time you invoke the API. Um, but hopefully this you know will get you started using either or. Um, I, I you know I can't really speak to the quality of the the referencing the geo coding to each one of them, but you know they probably are pretty good in terms of quality and, and getting um, highly relevant results back. But that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching and take care. Bye.